well, well. What the fuck you mean you don't know DJ Mark B? Care preach with Rashad. We are the prophet. See the episode, another sermon coming at you from 12 Ounce Sports, Zingo TV, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere else you can find us. Welcome to the show, man. What's up, Rashad? What it do, baby? Kawhi style, man. I'm missing the NBA right now, man. We should be in mid playoff form, but you know, we still got a little stuff going on. Got a little UFC action yesterday, man. And uh, I know we were tomorrow our NFL bets. We're going to probably make this upcoming season. So, still got a little bit of action going on, man. So, it's not too bad. What's good with, with you, man? Man, looking rough. I'm glad we don't do like a uh, a, a whole pat down of, of, of during this quarantine because uh, I think I think they, they're going to start opening up barber shops within a week. So, you know I'm going to be first in line. But I got to call my barber up and say, hey, Save me a seat at this time. I need it. I need to be first. I need to be first. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm rocking my, you know, we rocking our hats anyway, man. But it's just like without the, the barbershops and all that kind of stuff, man. You kind of got to do what you got to do. But it's all good, man. What you think about that last dance from this past weekend, though? Man, uh, a great episode. I, I I thought it was very, very the emotional part of the, of the whole series and, and why Michael Jordan is who he is. Uh, what drives uh, drives him, and I think, you know, I think something that probably won't won't ever click with him is that everybody wasn't like that, and I think that's what the whole point of uh, bringing up Scott Burrell, uh, you know, talk about him and how he can take it from Michael Jordan and stuff like that, and like he's you know pull guys who don't want to be pulled, push guys who don't want to be pushed, uh, because at some point you're going to need him to that next level, and I thought I thought that was very very interesting to see. And you know, I think that's that, that's had to do with a lot of like NBA stars now. Like, you know, this is why LeBron James goes for veterans, and this is why, you know, uh, you know, you know, Russ and Kevin Durant they probably couldn't win because they had the you know the Robersons and the Seth Lotions. They didn't have the guys who were you know hard. He had, he had Kendrick Perkins who was you know battle tested, but you know, it's like if you don't have that streak in you, like we've seen from from Jordan, we've seen from Kobe, uh, just just to name a few. It's it's kind of hard to get your team along, and when you need them, some guys never show up. Yeah, you know, it's just that thing of only a few people are made that way. Whether it's sports, business, only a few people have that. I'm gonna win by all cost mentality. I'm gonna outwork everybody mentality. Only a few people have that, and I understood what he was saying. You know, he never asked somebody to do something that he wouldn't do. So whether that's win the 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 suicides or you know whatever drill you doing, I'm trying to win every drill stuff like that or I'm gonna outlift everybody let, let's get to the gym work hard let's be in condition so I understood what he was saying but I just think in his mind he didn't he didn't understand the part of like Mike you're way more talented than everybody else right. <laughs> so like even though we even though we can put in the same amount of hours as you you're just that much better than everybody else so I think what he was trying to do was he knew that part. No, in a in a weird way, even though he never said that part, he kind of knew it in a weird way. That's why he kind of did the thing of I'm gonna make you as tough as I am. So when we're in those moments, you won't fold under pressure. And you know, there's a method to everybody's madness. And I don't care what anybody says. You can't argue with the results because nobody plays a sport to lose. Whether those guys are as talented as Mike or not, nobody plays to lose. Right. So you know, those six championships. If you were lucky to be a part of one of those. Hey man, you may have had to pay a price as far as you know some jokes, some criticism, some foul language, or maybe a punch in the chest or a punch in the eye at times. But you know he made it all worth it. I think so. You can't argue with the uh, with the results that he that he got out of his run. I, I got a I got a big uh, collection in my phone of, of Michael Jordan memes. And you talking about that episode had the best, <laughs> the best you can get from the, the whole Gary Payton situation. Um, I, I gotta ask you a question right here. Uh, so, why do you think he didn't he didn't want to give like Gary Payton his credit? Like, 
he, you know, he, I mean, obviously he laughed about it, uh, stuff like that. But if you look at the numbers, you saw from game one through three versus game four through six. Now, obviously, you got, you know, you got switches, you got doubles, you got all the different things that that, that come into play. Uh, but you know, when Gary when Gary started being the primary defender, then we, you saw positive results from the Sonics in that 90, uh, 93, uh, uh, not 93, uh, 96 finals. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like, man, all right, we know Gary Payton was one of the best defenders to play the game. Uh, you know, we kind of debate whether he, how great of a point guard he really is, you know, on, on that all time list. But it's like, he, he was, he was that man at that time. And I, I just don't understand, you know, you see Jordan give respect to Zeke and he don't like him. Uh, he gave us, he gave respect to, you know, the cool coach when he came back on, on the second time after the dream team destroyed him, but he didn't want to give it to, uh, to Gary Payton. I want to say he didn't give him credit. It's just because throughout that series, okay, you know, they, they said first three games he didn't guard Mike. Second, the, the you know, then the last three, the first three games he did it, the last three that he did. You really can't give him credit because Mike's results throughout the series varied anyway. All right, so you're looking at game one, Mike was 9 out of 18, 50%. Second game, 9 out of 22, 40%. That's still without Gary Payton gardening. Game three, 11 out of 23, 47%. Still no Gary Payton gardening. Then game four, six out of 19, 31%. 11 out of 22, 50%. So he still had, you know, a, a decent game. And then, of course, game six, you know, they, they won the title. and He was five out of 19. He mainly got his points off of free throws, 11 out of 12. So, I mean, I can't really say Gary was – Shutting him down, or maybe you oh, know yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. a shutting down is not the no. Nah, that's not that's not the question. I would say to be honest, you you can't even though if you want to say oh Kawhi stopped LeBron in the finals or you know Kawhi the LeBron stopper, LeBron's still going to get his. It's just how hard of a challenge is it uh, versus how easy it is without and, and, you know Jordan was having like like thirty two points and then went to like twenty four with Peyton on him through uh, game uh, four through six. So you know. That means somebody else from the Bulls got to score. So I, I, I think that's what I mean as far as like credit. Like, okay, well, he made somebody else step up. Like to me, I don't think he wanted to say it, but <laughs> I know you know you know he, he kind of said he had other things on his mind. So of course you know he's probably implying that Father's Day is coming up and all that kind of stuff. But I think Mike just don't want to say it after you've ran all after you've been training since the summer mm-hmm. with Space Jam. You came back on a mission, seventy-two and ten. You basically blitzed through with everybody in the playoffs. You swept the uh, the Heat. You got the Knicks out of there in five, and then you swept Orlando. I think he was just tired, bro. I think he was just tired. Like right, this too easy. <laughs> like man, y'all were eighty-seven and thirteen, like in a hundred game span for that year. Like I think he was just tired. Like, I don't I don't think that's cool for Mike to say I was tired. I'm kind of worn down. Right, yeah, yeah. But I, don't, I mean, but I just think he was tired ultimately. You know, I just think he was just, <laughs> he was just worn out because look at uh, Curry's numbers from their major run and stuff like that. He, he, I mean, he, his performance started to dip a little bit because he just didn't have any legs. I mean, then that, that's all that's all true too. I mean, I guess that when you're sweeping people, you ain't you ain't taking no days off. But you know, you know how Mike is probably so. Um, I, I thought that was pretty interesting to see. I love the little the Jordan Dome uh, part, man. That, that was that was great to me because you know we got to we get to see all these guys now, you know, play these these uh, Drew leagues and stuff like that. And we saw you see like whatever fitness that place they be playing at in LA, where you see Melo, you see Trey Young, and you, you know it's, it's it's when I watch those videos, I like to look at everybody like oh 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 that what he play oh he playing too, and I thought like you know a, a little baby Jawan Howard out there playing around. Like I, I thought all that was cool, bro. I, I thought that was um. You know, when Jordan trying to get back in shape for that dominant run against to, to beat Sonics in six, I, I thought I thought that was great to see. I, I kept I kept rewinding trying to find out who else was out there because you know they showed Robin, they showed Reggie, they showed Juwan, they showed I think I want to say they sh- no I don't think they showed Weber. Um, it was it was, it was somebody else they showed. I was like okay I see him, but it's like man where where was you know where was Shaq? <laughs> they probably didn't want him out there because he he probably you know dominated or something. But you know it, I was kind of see wh- who who was all out there man because that was. I know that was an exciting time, especially like on Disney, like not Disney, um, Warner Brothers on set. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you know the information is out there of who was there. Um, I know Reggie has done uh, interviews with uh, I think it was Dan Patrick, and he was kind of talking about some guys that were there, 
and you know how how fun it was, but at the same time, how crazy everybody was ahead of Mike getting in shape to come back and destroy all of them. So you know, um, for the trap. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of guys were there, and um, and you threw Shaq's now. Speaking of Shaq, real quick, man, he's been on his uh, you know, interview run lately, mm-hmm. and he was and he was throwing out stuff about um. You know, he thinks the season should be canceled and right. uh, let everybody just go home and get healthy, all that kind of stuff, which to a certain degree, I do agree with. And then, you know, he had to get his own shot in at, you know, the Spurs and, all, you know, his main rival got during to. that time. He, he got to. He had to get a shot in and, you know, understandably so, because I remember back in um, around that same time frame, Phil Jackson was throwing shots at the Spurs, talking about, you know, it, it was a shortened season. They – that the ring don't count, but he was just doing it to get up under the Spurs and pop skin. So uh, the main thing I want, I want to talk about this, man. Why do people try to undervalue or even at sometimes overvalue certain championships? Cause look at 2016 Cavs. I mean, we say that's like three rings for LeBron, but right. then you got something, <laughs> then you get, but then you, you, you get something like, you know, Oh, 99 Spurs or, no, that ring normally the counts lock out short of the season, or you get like the 94, 95 Rockets. People say, oh, well, they won those without Mike in the league. And so that normally the whole way. So why do you think people try to undervalue or even at times overvalue certain championships? Like why, why do you think that is? Man, great question. Um, So I, I, I think it's, I think it's all about in the moment. Um, and I know, you know, Shaq, all this, all this crazy talking and, he had a chance. He could have won ninety nine too. He got smacked by Spurs. So by, by the Spurs. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking for. Like, like he had like he had like he could have won that series. But anyway, um, yeah, like you know, a lot of people. Uh, you know, we, we had we had a question about who had the greatest run. Uh, well, Detroit, the Mavericks, the Raptors, and I forgot who the other team was. Um, Boston. Boston. No wait. Uh, so you know, and you you try you try to say okay, which which championship run was was better but at the end result they're all are championships winning is winning but it's like okay 94 95 the rockets it's not like they were i can understand why people say okay is is it's not as much as a a 2000 2001 Lakers championship because yes the jordan wasn't there on top of that but the rockets weren't even the best team in the west they were like a, they won the, both their rings as a five and six seed so it's kind of like no, the, 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 the first one they were like a two or three seed. The second one they was a six sec, seed, and the second one they had Clyde Drexler. So you know that kind of that's even yeah. They, they, right, they, they they stole Clyde at the trade deadline, man. Clyde got a bottle port. <laughs> yeah, too. But but yeah, so you you got you got that one. You you said the ninety nine lockout season uh, with Duncan, but it's like like I don't understand Shaq's point about that when like I said you, you could have won yourself. But you know the, you got the dirt running through um, you know the Lakers who won two in a row. Beating the OKC, first, OKC, and then you beat you beat uh, the Heat team that that got formed together that summer, and you like okay that's the greatest ever blah blah, blah. and I don't know it's 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 kind of like, it's, it's kind of like we have to because are all championships the same like when you, even though Toronto had a great run like I know I know I was on the Toronto bandwagon. Uh, oh saying, yeah, we saying, saying, saying <laughs> that we well, hey, and, hey we, we, we were going to every podcast pit Raptors in six. <laughs> hey Raptors, in, for real, we was there, and, and uh, you know, and we, but it was more of talk about the injuries though, leading up to it, you know, because I well, what what Clay banged up uh, a couple times, and uh, well, no, it, it wasn't that. It was it was KD and uh, whether or not Boogie was going to come back or not. Boogie, that's what it was. Boogie. So you had two guys now, like Raptors, man, and Raptors here. Like if if KD ain't there, I'm, I ain't scared. Like that's 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 a Raptors championship. And you, you saw the games. Okay, well, Kevin Durant, if he come back, what happens? Well, Kevin Durant to me provided that spark, and it's not necessarily that they with, with Kevin Durant they would just run away with it. I mean, they probably would have won the series if he played the whole series. But yeah, so it's kind of like, all right, do you value the Raptors championship that that great when they didn't have Kevin Durant there? But same the same for the Warriors. Kyrie and Kevin Love wasn't there when uh, they won their first championship. So you know, do you value that? So it's kind of, it's it's kind of like it's kind of how how do you how you want to look at it, how you want what angle you taking, but yeah, I, f- I feel like we have to do it. Um, but I can understand. I, I really can't understand the not the lockout season because it's not like y'all were not playing basketball. Like you know, what I'm saying how we talked Jordan Jordan Dome, you can play basketball anytime, pick up basketball and go play, and you got you played what fifty some games. Uh, and this season, 
kind of almost the same way a little bit. I mean, granted, this is this is worse because it's the end, and we're trying to hypothetically speak of who gonna win the, who gonna win the championship this year. Yeah, I, I got three kind of major points. So, like, the first one is like, all right, I think we kind of have to mm-hmm. overvalue and undervalue to a certain extent because. Okay, all of them aren't created equal. I think we both said that plenty of times because you got the Bill Russell eleven and thirteen, <laughs> but it's only eight teams in the league, and right. now we've the league's gone through so much expansion, and then you got to consider the fact that international players have crossed over due to you know the global game, mm. you know guys' skill sets have evolved, all that kind of stuff. So on ESPN, just drop the list on our list. I'm not putting Bill top five, top three. I don't care how many MVP the chips he won. I don't care. I don't. I don't <laughs> care that the. I, 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 I don't care that the Finals MVP is named after him. Much respect, salute to Bill. But man, eleven chips in the league where it's only eight teams, and y'all had a real short playoff. Yeah, you you kind of the best team. <laughs> so so you you kind of have to undervalue that over right. over the course of time. You know, winning it all is I mean, that's the goal, no matter what. And they did that. Mm-hmm. But over time, just considering the circumstances of the league and everything, that kind of has a stain on it. And then we get to those LeBron Cavs and Dirk Mavs because he beat the Heat, the Heatles. Now people think Dirk, the doggone best or second best power forward in the world. Like, <laughs> So, like, his legacy has gotten elevated. Right. All because he did. Yeah. <laughs> because he did win one because of who he beat. And same mm-hmm. way with the LeBron one. If they won 2015, he may not be, you know, he might not have elevated up to that, in my opinion, second, third spot in the GOAT rankings. He could still be, you know, four or five, depending upon who you ask. I know Jalen Rose, them say he like five or six, you know, all that kind of stuff. But because he beat seven, three, and nine Warriors, came back from down three, one, now that ring is elevated some more. But, um, we were texting about it, man. So I'm, I'm going to give you this main point why I want to talk about it right here. This, this is the main point. So if we putting asterisks on rings out here, if we saying 99 Spurs is an asterisk, let's talk about LeBron for a second. All right, so by the bylaws, if the season is done right now, the bylaw says the team with the best record since February 1st, if the season stops before April 1st, the team with the best record since February 1st is – by default, the champion if the season is done. So that means the Bucks may have the best record overall, but that means the Lakers by default win the title. So if we're gonna talk about LeBron being the goat, I, I got some criticism. And my boy four or six. <laughs> Look, I got some criticism. All right, people want to forget 2012 lockout season, shortened season, 66 games, and then you want to talk about all right if you win the title by default this year. That's two of your rings kind of compromised right there, man. And then, you know, 2013, you got saved by Ray Allen shot. So can we how can we say LeBron potentially the GOAT if we put asterisks on rings out here now? <laughs> I'm just saying now, if we get a, a default title by the bylaws and a 2012 title in the lockout year, and we put asterisks on lockout short seasons yeah. or stuff like that, he only legit got two rings at that point. Really could say one and a half because Ray Allen saved one him. So, <laughs> so, you know, like. Hey, you start breaking, start breaking it down after that. Really, so I'm like, you know. And, and, and then low key, you could discredit the 2016 ring because Draymond got to spin the game five. So, I mean. He got point seven five rings. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just. And I love LeBron, so I'm not, I'm not dissing LeBron at all. Right. I'm, just, I'm just staying this to the point of the overvaluing and devaluing rings. Like, the end result, all that matter, man. When somebody look at a resume, six-time champion, six-time Finals MVP, three-time champion, three-time Finals MVP, on a resume, that should be all that matter. But, you know, when you start getting to the nuances of what happened in this series or that season, who got hurt, who didn't make it, you can start devaluing certain guys. And that's kind of where we are today with LeBron and the Bill Russells on these ESPN GOAT lists. Yeah, so, all right, so let me ask you this. So who is – what championship in recent history? So you can – I mean, you you can go – since, since the last dance is something we've been talking about, you can go from from the start of the last dance championship all the way to now. Which one do you think is, like, the most the most overrated? Uh, uh, the one we value too much and we should not? 
2015 Warriors. Everybody ever heard. 2015 <laughs> like Warriors, man. Every like man, they, they they didn't play a playoff series against one fully healthy team. Like they were missing a key piece on every team. Yeah, I think what you had, uh I think Russ went not Russ, was it Russ that went down? Uh no, Mike Conley went down. Remember that one. Chris Paul. I can't remember who else went down, but the point uh Kyrie went down. I think every point guard went down against him. So Yeah, Kevin Kevin Love was out in the East Finals then as soon as game one. I who mean broke, Kyrie Kyrie up out of there. Who broke uh Kevin Love's shoulder? Uh Ole Nick. Uh, they, they, they were killing Ole Nick with like a it was like a little UFC move, a little shoulder <laughs> <You> wrench. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, okay. I, I like that one. 2015. I, I honestly, bro, I'm gonna say the, the Dallas Mavericks ring. Like I think we overvalued that one too much. Now, here, here's why. All right, so we know – all right, go, coming into that season, we know who the favorite, Lakers. Won two in a row. Kobe Bryant is prime. Paul Gasol is prime. And up and coming, star big, Andrew Bynum with Odom, with the Fisher. Like, we know we know, we know, know who the favorite, right? Okay, so beating the Lakers, I'm fine with that. that that's, that's amazing, especially sweep them. Like, domination, good. Everybody has to realize this OKC team, you cannot say what they have become. Because in that moment, they weren't ready. Lakers smacked them the year before. Dallas smacked them this year. When they finally made over the hump, they got smacked in the finals. Like they, they got smacked <laughs> every time. They they was not ready. I'm sorry. Like we have to realize this this this, this dirt championship run was great. But not for the OKC one. Like beating OKC wasn't the reason why it was a great one. It was great because you swept the two-time champion, and because you beat the the I mean you know, the Heaters. What you know they call it not one, not two, not three. Uh, oh yeah, team. So it's like you 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 put the first I guess super team assemble. I, I I don't. I feel like I feel like we I feel like we kind of went over the names of just LeBron Wade and Bosh. and like the fourth player wasn't even close and <laughs> they level like so I, I you know Haslam and Charm was like. Uh, so I, I feel like we overvalued that one, especially when you're saying that's the reason why he's the second best power forward or he's, you know, third best power forward, like, because he got that. And you don't you don't want to mention Tyson Chandler, Defensive Player of the Year candidate. You don't want to mention Jason Kidd, Hall, all the time, uh, Hall of Famer, best point guard, one of the best point guards I've ever played. You don't want to mention the Jason Terrys of the world who, who you know, you'll get you 18 points a game. So I, th- I think that was pretty overrated. Um, it is just because everybody uses it so much as the best one. It, and I think it is, it's a great run. But we got we get, we can't we can't act like that OKC run was just was just so <laughs> – being OKC was the, was the end-all, be-all. Yeah, man. While we're on the subject, man, I want to give some shout-outs to Tyson Chandler, man, because everywhere that dude go, man, win and follow Tyson Chandler, bro. Yep. With the Hornets and with the Hornets and Chris Paul, they were winning a lot of games down there with Byron Scott. Championship with the Mavs. He was on uh, the Knicks. The Knicks won Defensive Player of the Year. Won some big games there. And man, even when the Bobcats made the playoffs that year, that was Tyson, uh, Stephen Jackson, Gerald Wallace. So they like, Tyson, That's he he a key he a key piece to get some wins. Hey, like, hey you know what's crazy? So, the Rockets traded the Rockets traded uh, Clint Capella. And had Peter Tucker playing center, but a backup Tyson Chandler, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> when, when all and, this in, but Tyson might be the right place, for the right time. Was it? And Tyson Chandler got drafted what, by, by by my boy Jerry Krause, man. So shout out oh, yeah, to Jerry. Got drafted <laughs> by the, by the Bulls, man. Jerry was trying to go big with Tyson and um, Eddie Curry. Eddie yeah. Curry, yeah. And, and he had took he, he had took Elton Brand and traded him a little while before that, man. So Jerry Krause know how to find a good big man for real. Um, so, all right, so we talked about the overrated. And I, I do like your point about how we have to. And and if, you, if, you, if you're going to start uh, putting asterisks on a lot of championships, we can really break down a lot of them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really – Like, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, really, so don't open you, that box. You, 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 can, you, can, you can, you know, poke a hole in anybody's championship. You can say, like, uh, I think it was 95 when the league expanded to, like, uh, I think Toronto and Vancouver are 95. So you can say that 95 championship was diluted. And people do try to criticize Jordan for playing in the expansion league and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you, you can find a hole in anybody's resume. You can say one of the Lakers titles is, you know, they beat the Spurs when Duncan was hurt. Like you can say all kind of right. things about that kind or, of stuff. But uh, Derry Fisher shot 
0.4 seconds. Was it really 0.4? Like, you know, did you <laughs> like today's Bro, technology? Is he I, making I, that shot? I, I still don't believe that shot yeah. was legit. Man, there's no care. way you can he fish, baby. <laughs> there, there's no way you can run up, catch the ball, turn, get it off, and hit it. I mean, great shot by him, but right, man, right. that's 0.4 seconds. That's fast as heck. But, but you got you got to think that shot right there for the Lakers, the Robert Orr is second on the Kings one. Oh, he, and look, Tim Donnie, he was betting on the series, man. <laughs> hey, watch out. So, hey, <laughs> hey but, look, but, so, but that those two shots changed the series. And and you like you can poke a hole in and say, man, like, you know, that shot probably shouldn't have counted. Tim Donnie, you know, I had betting on games, so he's throwing at games. <laughs> you know, you can you can do a lot of different things, man. Uh you can you can poke a hole at um like you can even poke a hole at I mean, I know it was greatness. You can poke a hole at Jordan's championships and you can say Oh well, you know, he came after Bird and and Mag- Magic was old and he was and he left right right when Shaq and Kobe and Tim Duncan came up. Like you, you can poke a hole in anybody's cup, in any championship. Don't open that box yeah. up. Yeah, that's why. Like, like the whole asterisk thing. I'm not cool with putting asterisks on championships. I'm I'm not cool with that. I'm just I'm but I'm okay with how you value certain rings because you know. That was a Cleveland first championship in who knows how long, fifty some years. So they never, you know, never gonna win again either in no sport. <laughs> yeah, so you know, so so you kind of got to hold that in a good regard, or like that was Toronto's first one, so you're gonna have to hold that in some high regard. And plus, like that whole trade with Kawhi and all that kind of stuff, you got to hold some of that. Was it, wasn't uh, eleven? Wasn't that uh, wasn't that Dirk's uh, Dallas first one? Yeah, eleven, and then like you know, people love that. D Way 06 went with the Heat and what he did in the finals. So, you know, you kind of have to hold certain ones in that, in a, uh, a higher regard. Like the old one, Lakers get held in high regard because they blitzed through the playoffs. So, you know, a certain one, 04 Pistons, they were, I mean, not, yeah, they uh, you know, beat the Lakers, broke up the Lakers. And then you got 08 Celtics. That kind of put the Lakers, Celtics rivalry back on the map. So you kind of can, you know, Oh, big up, s- s- big up, some more than others, or stuff like that. Especially when you only won like one, you know, he's like, "Well, that Miles, <laughs> that Miles one." <won> one. <laughs> but when you got when, when you got multiple, it's like, "Oh, the Bulls. How do you rank the Bulls championships? You really can't rank them, you know. It's because it's you got so many. It's like ranking your kids. You don't rank your kids. <laughs> you would, but, man, but you ain't gonna say it to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you always screwing up. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? All right, so. Quickly, what what would what would be your what would be the most undervalued? The one that we don't talk uh, about that that, sh- that really should be should be valued higher than what it what it really is. And we still going on the same time frame of like from Jordan's run to now or I mean I mean if you got that or if you got another one from a different time period, that's fine. Like I, I don't think people talk about either one of the Pistons or the Rockets ones enough just because of I think the NBA just kind of built around like that that major star. So you got the '80s coming off Magic Bird, and then you got the Pistons who just disrupt, you know, that transition of right. going from <laughs> from Magic Bird to Mike. They they broke that up for two years. So you know, people mainly look at them as like the bad boys, not as two time back to back champions, and could have been three time back to back champions, and not for that that crazy call. In uh in eighty eight, so they could have potentially won three in a row, and then both of those Rockets wins because people always try to say if Mike wasn't in the if Mike was in the lead, this wouldn't happen. But as we've seen, dude was burned out. They probably wouldn't even made it to the finals. Right. They would have got, got they would have got to- right. yeah, they got got torn up. Yeah. So because I, I think both of those kind of get both of those teams back to backs get overlooked because you know what now with the. LeBron with the the Cavs and the Heat, they gonna always get big up because it's LeBron. Then you got the KD Steph Warriors dominant five year run. They gonna always get their props, and then those other teams who are talking about, they'll get their props because of their first one or is attached to a certain player. But I think those, you know, Hakeem and, and Zeke's two championships, they get overlooked a lot. And I think that's the part you make like you pin right there, like. Not only did they get one, like Toronto may 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 only get one. They probably done. Uh, you got the Mavericks. They probably. I mean, I think Luka gonna get a championship, but at this time period, they're only gonna get one. It's leaking, get one. Pistons sneaked in and get one. Uh, oh four Pistons, but the, the Zeke Pistons and the Rockets. Not only they got two, and that, that's the thing about it. they got two back to back. You're talking about only teams that were back that were repeating was the Magic Birds of the world, and and Jordan and now Zeke and Akeem do it too. Like he's like man. 
who anybody can do it. It's, it's, it's your mindset going through as a when you, when you win the one, I can get another one because you think about it. We we didn't have that many champions, like <laughs> we, oh, <nah. laughs> since, since the eighties, like we didn't have that many teams that won the championship because everybody kept winning the same one. So uh, I I can agree with that one too. Uh, with, with with the Pistons and the Keem uh, and the Rockets in in the nineties, and I always tell people that uh, that story, man. Like they 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 cannot win eight in a row. The Bulls cannot winning winning is detrimental as, to an extent. Like you keep winning, like we saw they broke up, uh, and let, uh, Kobe Shaq broke up. The teams that stayed the longest be losing. So like, just, bro, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think people understand like. When you try to go for a potential four P, all that kind of stuff, the guys are tired. Like that's why it's hard to even go back to back or even three P because the guys are tired. Like look at um all those years the Lakers made it back to back. They were there were sometimes they were getting swept by people because they were tired. Like they had to go lose and get remotivated to right. try yeah. to go win again. Like, but, yeah. like I think I think Mike leaving rejuvenated him both times because you know he needed to to get his get his mojo back, like all right, Pistons keep beating me. I'm gonna get in the gym. I'm gonna go hard. Then you beat them. All right, now I'm I'm tired. The media killing me. I got all this personal stuff going on. I'm out of here for a little bit. Then he got remotivated. Let's go try to win again. Then before you know it, the end of that three peat, the second one, he was tired again. Or look at look at um the Lakers. They won three. Shaq and Kobe butt heads. Yeah, yeah. It's time to go and start breaking it up. Even the, even the second time with uh, him and Powell. See what happened in 2011. They got smacked by Mavs. Like you just you start to hit a wall because you you only can make so many deep playoff runs because you're playing basically, you know, 20, 30 some extra games per time. That's a whole other season, basically. Right. I would I would say it's only three teams uh in modern history. Like I said, we're not counting the Bill Russell 12 teams. Uh, modern history. Man, I, I don't I don't count nothing before the merge or low keeper. Like <laughs> if if it happened before the merge, I don't count. Don't it. count. Right. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's a good rule, um, but for, I, I say three teams had the chance to to win for the long stretches of period of time, and this is the only way it can happen. So the first one was Boston in the eighties, and drafting Lynn Bias was was the two that was that was something you had to do. You had to have a stacked team. You win a bunch of games. You win a bunch of titles. Then have another player just as elite come to the fore to, to help y'all out because he haven't won. So you got that one. Then you have the Lakers. The Lakers in in two thousands could have done it if this was ninety seven Malone and ninety seven Gary Payton. Like the fact that it was 04 versions, that's why even they got to the finals, they haven't won, so they're motivated. They're just too old. So like that was that was one team, and then you got the Warriors with the Curry adding you know adding them adding the rent. But of course LeBron got in between and won one. So I think those three teams, the only one who really had the chance, but they did it the right way as far as. You have to add somebody who never won because you can't just keep winning. So if the Bulls would have added, I don't know, uh, I don't know, damn Clyde, I don't care. Like whoever you want, whoever you want to <laughs> say, somebody who never won, Jordan probably, you know, oh, you gonna get twenty five? Hey, but look, that, that's that's what happened with those ninety five Rockets though. They went and got Clyde in that trade and right, that, never won, that, that won, propelled won. Pro, pro, propelled that playoff run because you you always need somebody who's gonna either be like you said, a motivated because they haven't won one. Or be that young person who can kind of step up, like they, they kind of grow up before your eyes and take you over right. the home. So you you need something like that. All right, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and uh, then we'll be right back. Dak Prescott, right? So we talked about his uh, his his contract with the Cowboys, and they talk about like why he hasn't signed. And everybody want to you know point the finger at Cowboys, which which is fine to do to a certain degree. To a certain extent, but you gotta think what Dak trying to do right now. Uh amid all this COVID stuff, um, and also staying flexible with the market, uh, the rumors have it that Dak Prescott is trying to get like 45, 46 million dollars his last year of his deal. And do you th- do you think that's crazy? Um, or you think that's smart because you think about it. So right now we're talking about we're talking about the next guy, Russell Wilson at thirty five million dollars. Um so we talk about Mahomes, Watson, Lamar Jackson, the next big three guys, and they're going to get at least forty. So we talk about five years from now, that Prescott, that money is probably still going to go up, maybe, and you know, and and that's what you you know that's what you're you're, you're predicating on. Do you think it's crazy for Dak to ask for forty five that last season, or you think that's really the smart business? It's smart business, man, because the 
the NFL is a billion dollar business. These franchises, especially the Dallas Cowboys, they <laughs> worth so much doggone money. Players, when when you retire, that organization will continue on for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But you have a short shelf life as a player. I'm always for the players getting the most amount of money that they can. But with a small caveat, get the most money you can, but don't do it at the expense of winning. Because I don't want to hear you saying you want to trade, you ain't got no weapons, all that kind of stuff. Bradley Bill. It's just so like, so I said, so like on the NBA, and that goes for NBA and NFL side, you know. But like, you know, I, I know guys want to get their money, get secured long term, and all that kind of stuff. But don't be out here taking the max and knowing you want to try to win. So as a quarterback, when you take the max, that limits your defense, that limits your offensive line help, receiver help, all that kind of stuff. I ain't got to say the running back because we don't pay running backs. And on the NBA side, when you start, you know, taking the max and give it to the wrong person, like a Chandler Parsons, you you screwed for a while because nobody yeah. want to trade for the contract. So get the most money you can, but don't do it at the expense of sabotaging the roster. So I kind of want to ask you this. We talk, So you remember um... – Growing up, do you know every if you was a first round draft pick, how much money was you making? Like, you was getting forty five million out of the gate. Like, you know, re record second setting deals. Well, you, you, you know, it, it changed with uh Jamarcus Russell right. in the field. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so this is my point. All right. So we saw like Jamarcus Russell, Sam Bradford, um, you know, Carson Palmer, all these number one picks uh coming that came out early two thousands, uh, heading toward two thousand tens. They got big money before they even stepped foot on the field. And that's because we was overvaluing that QB position early. So what did the NFL do? They fixed it. They they say, okay, you got this, you got this scale. The first pick gonna make this much, second pick gonna make this much. Just finally a rookie scale, just like the NBA. Uh, and you saw NBA take advantage of, you know, all these guys. Uh, the, the, yeah, even for even for a while the NBA didn't have it because right. Jawan Howard, you know, he had the same age as Mike had David Falcon. He made like a hundred million. I think on his first five or six years. Yeah, so, but you see, but everybody had a fix because, one, as a GM, you cannot miss. You cannot throw money. First of all, you're already missing. <laughs> missing on a player. Like, all right, imagine this, Rashad. Imagine if that, that rookie's thing wasn't wasn't there and you paid Mitch Trubisky for being the second overall pick. Like, not only not only did you pick the wrong player by a long shot, you paid him all the money. So now your team, so you can't even get better. At least with, at least now when you got Mitch, that's why you saw them had that great year because – they had they could pay Khalil Mack and they can do all this different stuff. Um, it, do you think at some point the NFL is going to say, "No, <laughs> we're not going past this number. This is the top. This is the top, and only a, a few guys can meet this threshold or go or, or maybe push it slightly." So I say, for example, well, I think Russ and Rogers got the most money right now as a quarterback. So let's. So if you let's say I think Rod, Rod, Russ is my top five, Rogers is five to six because he's on the way down. Uh, you have Russ, Rogers in your top five or somewhere around there? Yeah, I, I think it's you know no order. Russ, Mahomes, Rogers. I got Carson Wentz up there as well. All right, so let's say let's say we both think he, he they're top five quarterbacks. Russ and Rogers. Russ making thirty five. I want to say Rogers is thirty six somewhere around there. Yeah, he's thirty six. So, I think Russ is thirty one. I think. So if those, age age wise. No, I mean as far as uh uh million dollar like the contract. Um, I want to say uh yeah yeah Russ, yeah Russ, contract wise they both they both in them them thirties should be both right. So like mid, 30s, mid by mid thirties. So if that press got coming up to the thing and let's say the thresh whatever whatever y'all your criteria is, are you saying no? This is Russell Wilson making thirty five million dollars. So all you can ask for is thirty four point eight. I'm tired of this. You know, at, at some point the owners will get tired of this setting the market. Situations, you know what I mean? Like I, I understand that you have to keep doing that for the business sake, but think about this. So let's say if the cap, whatever, whatever the total cap is for a whole team, let's let's just say a hundred million dollars, just to keep it simple math. If if Russ is making thirty five, like y- your team is already like hard to make the rest of your the rest of your roster because you don't have that much money. So we, we make we making the salary cap for quarterbacks too high, like percentage wise. And it's, it's not thirty five percent. It's probably more like. 17, 16, 17. But it's like, okay, as an owner, I know Russell Wilson made 35. I'm sorry, Dak Prescott. I'm sorry, Kirk Cousins. I'm sorry, Jimmy G. I'm sorry, Derek Carr. These guys who are coming up next, I'm, I'm sorry. You're not on Russell Wilson's level, so you can't go past 35. And, you know, it's kind of like a, a reverse rookie scale 
when you think about it that way, is like at some point, do you think they they will cut this off? Because if you think about it, if the salary if the salary cap will go up because of all these the extra game, we, uh, you know, seventeen games schedule, so that's extra uh, money, uh, more TV deals, blah blah. Do you, but do you think they, they they'll cut this off because we can't just keep valuing the quarterback position to be this much and this much and this much and like you mentioned, it's gonna it's gonna co- like hurt the cost of winning because now I can't pay my running back who the market never goes up. I can't pay my corner. My corner Jalen Ramsey he gonna make twenty million dollars. Aaron Donald at twenty something million dollars. Buckner just got twenty one. So you're talking about the next D tackle making twenty three? Like you know what I'm saying? Like we are gonna keep doing this right here. The money don't go to a certain point. It's like you you gonna always be losing. Well, I can't say they'll cut it off because you know with CBAs, players and all those guys, they have to agree. Them and the owners have to agree upon percentage splits, all that kind of stuff. Right. So I can't say they'll cut it off because as as a player, as long as I can keep making the money, the, the amount of money I want, I don't care. You know, yeah. yeah. To, you- to a certain degree, you know, you don't you don't care. So like, some guys will be willing to. Do the Brady on the back end because Brady got his money too, but on the back end he like I didn't I got to Super Bowl a couple of times, but I didn't win a championship. So now I'm gonna start taking these discounts and try to win, and which they did, or like the Drew Brees is doing now. I'm gonna take discounts or one year deals to to start him. I think while you're in your prime though, you're incentivized to go ahead and take the bag and whatever whatever come with that come with that. Do you, all right, so so you talk about Tom Brady. So do you think that was more of Tom Brady saying I'm gonna take the discount? Or do you think it's more of Bill Belichick and them saying, "This is what we're going to give you"? Like I think, I think to me, nobody, nobody can tell us what happened in the room except those people that was there. But to me, I think Patriots presented presented something to Tom Brady and say, "All right, this is what we can give you. Here's why: we want to pay this guy, we want to pay this guy, and if you take this much, we're going, you're going to hurt this position. You're going to hurt this position." And I think, I think that's why Tom Brady took less because think about it. I don't. I don't think Tom Brady. Like he know he won the best the quarterbacks ever do it, but I don't think he would do it at the expense of I'm going to take mediocre money. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't think it's that much for 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 Brady to say like because he just got what he just got what twenty five million dollars. Yeah, twenty five from Tampa Bay. If Tom Brady wanted to play and he wanted to discount, he could take five million and let's go pay Clowney. Uh, who was that free agency? Um. You got climbing out there. You got you got some. You got a right guard. The Saints just just, just cut that. You need offensive line help. You got you got uh, Everson Griffin still like that. You can if you if he really wanted to take a discount, he gonna play. Like you know, you get what I'm saying. Like he gonna play whether you or not because he want to still play the game. And it's like the money the money value is like okay, Dak Prescott getting all this money, and it's like who who losing this situation? Because if both teams both sides can lose this, right? Dak can lose this because. Cowboys already got the insurance policy in the Dalton. And I don't know what you think about Andy Dalton th- at this stage, but they probably can still go far. Like, they can win nine games, ten games. And on the other side, Cowboys, if the, if you don't pay Dak Prescott and Dalton ain't, is, isn't who he was, then now you have a quarterback, and now you have to go find one. Well, I disagree on the running thing just for – like, just real quick, just real minor because – he can get his money, but you know, Bill went to paying certain people. Bill will get you up out of here and get some more picks and retool right. younger. So, so Brady could always keep, you know, him and his agent probably come in with a number in mind. All right, this is our number. So we'll just say it's $28 million. We would look for 28 But if Bill say, look, we need the extra $3 million to do some small things here, right. here, and here to kind of help us out, then you're like, okay, I'll take 25. But you're going to always come in with a number in mind. And you can't yeah. lowball and say, if you're coming in at 28 and I'm coming in you know, at 20, you're like, oh, no, that's that ain't <laughs> it right there. So so then at that point, you know, the guys start to feel disrespected. But, you know, just looking at how Bill and those guys always did the roster as far as trade you or cut you for it, you know, we got to pay you before it's too early. I think Brady was always fine with taking whatever they – um they offer long as they kind of met with him and his agent were looking for number wise, and you can explain, all right, this is what we're looking for and why right. we're doing we're doing what we're doing. But on the Dax side, you know, he should just do the the Kirk Cousins man, just play on a couple franchise tags, go on a year by year basis. But I can see why he may want a long term contract too, because 
you've been on a rookie scale and you were a late round pick, you really haven't made that Nothing. kind of <laughs> yeah, you really you haven't made that big money, man. So I can see how he's thinking, what if the Alex Smith thing happens to me? I'm done. What if, you know, torn ACL, anything, man? Like you don't you really don't know because football is a violent game. And that would really set back his career as well as the Cowboys because now you don't have a quarterback and you got to try to go find another quarterback. I like Andy and, you know, his first four or five years, he did make the playoffs, a couple of 10, 11 win seasons, stuff like that. But he is, even though he may be wiser in the QB room, stuff like that, he's still, I think, around 30 ish now. And, you know, you're starting to get nine, 10 years in the league and you're starting to break down a little bit. And, you know, you got your division, Daniel Jones and Giants, Redskins on the rise, Carson Wentz, Eagles, they're not going anywhere. So you could start putting yourself in a position where you start missing the playoffs or you're going 8 and 8, 500, and it's like, well, will we fire Jason Garrett for we still going to be mediocre? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I think both teams are playing a dangerous game. Uh, so so you got to be careful. You got to yeah. be careful. Y'all going to say you got to be careful. Uh, all right, so – I mean, I, I think I think that he should he should take the take the franchise tag for now, but to a certain extent, it's like I can understand why you want that forty five million dollars because if they don't change this the scale, it's gonna keep growing, keep growing, and you come to look at it like look at um Derek Carr's contract it's terrible right now like you know for for a starting quarterback it looks terrible because he got paid the highest paid player three four years ago. And now, yeah, the market, market, the market changed. changed. It, 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 it was the same with, same with Cam too. No, he right. was only gonna make twenty million this year, but that's because the the market reset itself with salary cap jumps, t- TV deals, and, and I think it's you great. know just lead you no know, lead revenue, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think the NFL may start trending towards the NBA route. As far as guys may take two to three year deals and just take a like a, a heavy loaded guarantee, I think that could be a trend or as far as like a CBA point of view, they may try to look at what the NBA is doing for us. All right, if you've been with this team for so long and you do four or five years, or whatever, you can get this amount. But if you leave, you can get this amount. Something like that may come into that's, play at some point. Yeah, that's that's more idea. But I can understand that. Like man. It, it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it though. I mean, if I'm an NFL guy, I wouldn't like it because man, if I can make the top out pay and benefit from the salary cap jump in my year the same way the NBA did when they had that weird. That weird gap where you know guys would get like every tournament getting paid like eighty million dollars. Like if, <laughs> if you can benefit from money. that, <laughs> gotcha. like if you can if you can benefit from that, by all means take advantage of it. Yeah, um, and I think you know from the corporate position, you taking that much. That's why I said like they might have to restructure this this percentage because I'm not saying like like I'm not I'm not saying take away from the if if hundred percent all the team. And the quarter, the star quarterbacks are making twenty percent, eighty for the rest of your team, but fifty two players. That's that's just that just don't make sense, especially for one guy because that one guy get hurts. Like you said, I mean, can you can you save your season? We talked about last week about backup quarterbacks. Do you have that guy to save your season? And so I, I just I just think, man, at some point, I'm not saying take the money away. I'm just saying give it to other players, like to a certain degree. But I can understand why you won that forty five uh, that last year because you want to be up there in the market with everybody else. Um, if if for whatever reason uh, that becomes available, let's say he don't sign the franchise, let's say, let's say they just cut, cut ties and say, you know what, it ain't gonna work out, blah blah, and we separating deals. So all, all, all the quarterback needy teams, do you rather just tank for for Trevor, uh, tank for Justin Fields and Trey Lance out of North Dakota State, or do you pay Dak Prescott? It depends upon which team it is, like you know. Because that that'll vary depending upon if you're at the top of the draft, you'll be thinking, all right, we know what this guy is, but we got this hot upside with Trevor. So it'll depend upon that team and that general manner. Do you wanna do you wanna go the low the cheaper route with the draft pick or go the expensive route with that? Because I don't care what team you can go to. He's gonna ask for thirty something million dollars. He gonna he gonna ask for whatever golf and wins getting. He asking at for that. At least that. At least that. Yeah, right, right. So oh, yeah. So it so it'll depend upon who's in the market as far as you know, what what kind of position are you in? Are you stuck with do you see like a, a I don't know, a Derek Carr, like do you see like Dak has an upgrade from that? So you will trade this guy to bring in this guy or do you feel like, all right, well, we tried Haskins, we tried Kyle Allen, let's go get this guy. You know, 
it'll, it'll kind of depend upon we, we try Jared Stidham, do we go get this guy? It'll just kind of depend upon what team it is and who's at the top of that draft and how much they believe in a uh, in a prospect. Because like look at this year with um Tua and Herbert, it's like well nobody want to go get Cam because they're in a position to get one of those guys. Right. I, I just think a Dak Prescott to me. In my opinion, I mean, I, I I don't think it's a hot take. I think that Prescott is a top 10 quarterback in the league today. Going into the season, I think he'd be top 10. And he's shown the ability to do different things. So, I, you know, it, I think maybe maybe the, the sorry teams, obviously, to take Trevor Lawrence because adding that Prescott doesn't make you, a you know, a playoff caliber team. But, you know, like you said, the Raiders, Ra- Ra- perfect example. I, I think signing Dak would be tremendous to that team, and that team can, boom, be an AFC West powerhouse, you know, so um, versus uh, the Jags who traded their whole team away and got rookies now. So, you know, you're right. It all, it's all going to be on the team. But if he does become available, man, like we saw. Because you, Kirk- you, know, you, you know Jags will pay for him. Like they'll you, pay for him. You saw but if they got the first, But they got the first pick. They going cheap and going to get trimmed. Right, right, right. But it's like, man, you saw what Kirk Cousins got on the free market. We really never see, you know, top 15 plus quarterbacks hit the market. So we, like this this year, I mean, you can say what you want about Jameis, you can say what you want about Tom Brady at this stage, you know. But you know, they're they, they what to me they're not top ten at this stage of their careers. So it's like we, ne- we it's gonna be crazy to see how much you know they get uh, that would get if he if he was there. Man, profit articles featuring Tom Brady and Dak over the next two weeks. Facts, and we come we come hard with that one. Um, <clears throat> last not least, man, the uh, ESPN article. We got we got we got seven minutes of uh, man. Here, man. I'll, I'll, I'm I'm finna sign off. I'm finna sign off. Hey, what's that what's that Michael Jordan? Let me let me get my let me get up. Uh man. Uh, what might be what (laughs) (laughs) what? (laughs) That's crazy. Michael like, come on, y'all tripping, bro. Uh, They wildin', bro. They've been wildin' for the longest as far as list concerns. Like you remember they used to put out the ESPN top basketball players in the game. Like, top one hundred for the season. Oh yeah, but they was terrible. Like so, I remember mean, they had they had like Lonzo Ball like fifty and Melo fifty. <laughs> they, Bruh, they, they, had Co- they had Kobe at ninety two ninety three one year. Uh, I think twenty sixteen they had like AI and Chris Paul at like twenty seven and forty. Then now this year it didn't flip flop. They got on oppositely rank oh, all that kind of stuff. You you got Giannis at twenty seven. That I mean. To me, that's that's a hot take, man. Giannis at twenty seven right now. I, the man just won it for a playoff series, and, and but they the, love killing. They love killing James Harden for the playoff. They 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 love they love killing James Harden. They love killing Anthony Davis for not making the playoffs. We, we mad at Davis for being forty five, but Giannis at twenty seven. First of all, they I, on the same tier to me. First of all, I'm mad, I'm mad that Chris Paul is ten spots behind Steve Nash. Ooh, I'm, y'all look at I don't like the cuss boy because. That's a, that's a cold bro, word right there. <laughs> bro, that's a cold they, word. Look, man, much respect to these guys' family, what they did to the game and all right, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, I'm not putting Russell Webber behind no Bob Cousy. Hey, but Bob. I don't care if it is one spot. Robert, I, don't, I don't care. Robert Cousy, <laughs> boy. Yeah, man. I, nah, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't have, you can't have the, you can't, you can't tell me Harden is 32. And CP's forty, and then turn around and, and flip and say like, you know, Durant and Curry are top fifteen. Chris Paul, prime wise, I mean, because his career's his career's almost done, and Curry is not. So it's like thirty spots, bro. That's a lot. I mean, on on the point guard ranking all time, we probably got the same thing, just different order. I got Magic one. Right. I still got Big O two. I got Steph at three, Zeke at four, and I got Chris Paul at five. And I can debate the Zeke Chris Paul. The tiebreaker is just one guy has two rings and a Finals MVP versus Chris Paul, who kind of carried multiple franchises. So you can debate that. You can debate the Steph over Big O because of the impact on the game, all that kind of stuff, and also the era. Like I said, Big O was before the merger. Some of that kind of don't <laughs> count to a certain degree, <laughs> but I still. But I still think he number two because he the original triple double. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we we pretty much. I mean, I got Magic. I I have Zeke as two for me right now. Um, trajectory wise, Curry will be better than Zeke at some point in my book. But for right now, I, I do have Zeke above him. Uh, I will go Curry three, Big O four, 
and then my five, my five will be CP or Stockton coming in at six. So yeah, you know, five, 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 six, right yeah, there. So yeah. it's like it's like I mean we we pretty much got the same guy, different order, but yeah, man. So it, and it's all a close call. That's the thing. Right. It's all a close call. But it's, for them to have a list that that separate like that, that ain't cool. To to me, it's like all right. So when I was scrolling through the list, I was like, okay, based off my rankings, how like I'm like I'm I'm I, I can care less about like I can care less about Chris Paul forty. If Chris Paul was forty and Nash was forty nine, okay, that, my, my rankings are all right. But when you, well, I see, I scroll up, I see Charles Barkley. I say, okay, Charles, okay. I see, uh, I see, I see Kevin Garnett. All right, cool. That's for me. I, I mean, I like Barkley better than Garnett. But that's fine. I can understand. Dirk and Dem alone. We, we talked about this before. If you are, if you are a Dirk fan, or when you rank the top five, the big power for the top five, Dirk is either two or five. You cannot put him in between a Barkley and Malone and say, oh, this and this and this, when Barkley, Kevin Garnett, and Malone are all all around players. You cannot say Dirk is is bet in between either of them. He had to be second behind Tim Duncan because you say offense is better than all around, or he's fifth because you understand that all around is better than just offense. So, you know, stuff like that I was going through. The top ten, oh, yeah. don't get don't get a start in the top ten. Cause out nine of my ten was there. Y'all know who shouldn't be there. <laughs> Bro. Look, Mike one, Braun two, Kareem three. That now this is just me. Kareem three, Kobe four. Just because he got more championships don't mean he better. Larry Bird is number five. Magic Johnson number six. Shaq number seven. Tim Duncan number eight. Hakeem number nine. And Kevin Durant number ten. That's my top ten right there. All right, see, I still I still got and, and, and you saw who was omitted? <laughs> oh, <I'm> Bill! Not... <laughs> <laughs> Get Bill out of here. Uh, I, I love Bill. I mean, I, I, I love watching him on the you know, NBA Finals and stuff, like uh, walking around the arena and stuff, but I'm sorry. Like, you can't just be – you can't be 6'9", on the 50%. I don't care. How, it could be eight, six teams, 20 teams. I don't care. Them 11 rings, I mean, nothing to me. Uh, my top 10, almost the same, except I don't have KD yet in yet. I I still got Will I got Will um as my ten I think Akeem Olajuwon and, and look he Will's my eleven so that's fine so but I got I, I think Akeem Olajuwon gets so much like I don't understand like they be I mean he I mean I, what number is he on this list um you remember what? Akeem was like number twelve or thirteen okay, I think like, he, he wasn't that far out Katie's fourteen thir- thirteen was uh, Curry I think Big O and Akeem must have been the, the twelve and eleven spot. Um, but Hakeem got to be in your top ten, man. I, I don't see, I don't see what you saying that he's a. We talk about elite guys, two way superstar. Biz can't do it about him. He ain't really had no good. I mean, th- th- think of all the plays he had with him. Like we talk about every big. Shaq had Kobe. Uh, uh, quickly before we run out of time, Shaq had Kobe. Co- Kobe, Kobe, Penny away. Right, Tim Duncan uh, had big. You uh, know, had guards, Hall of Fame guards. Uh. Um, who was Will Chamberlain had Jerry West, Elgin Bay, like all these guys had somebody. Hakeem got directly one year, like Kenny Jet Smith. Are you seeing Robert Ward? Come on, bro. Man, Sam Cassell, man, don't do, don't do Sam like that. <laughs> Sam, man, come on, man. That's... Man, don't don't do Mad Max like that, bro. <laughs> man, yeah. So, hey, Hakeem, Hakeem didn't have it, and they still got two championships. So I don't care if Jordan was there or not. Damn it. Um, man, this list is crazy, bro. Like. I don't even know why they try. They don't, they don't man, I, I, I'm done with ESPN list. I'm leaving it at that. I'm leaving it at that. All right, man. That's that. We got 20 seconds left. Uh, anything we'll say before I get out of here, man? No, nah, man. Everybody stay safe, man. Facts. Uh, hopefully, I got a haircut by the next time y'all see me because I'm struggling. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's Preach Care. Preach with Rashad. Yeah. <laughs>